Hey everyone, last week it was Matt Hancock with marital issues, and this week Michael Gove announced that he and his wife are getting divorced. Not sure if you've heard the old one about the dentist and the manicurist that got divorced, and they fought tooth and nail. Reminds me also of the friend I have who used to go out with the lady that was the voice of the speaking clock, but then they broke up and she won't give him the time of day now. Anyway, the Michael Gove story is not terribly surprising to those that know one. You don't want to be careful with libel law here, so I'll simply suggest that you go and search for Michael Gove and Dominic Cummings and let Google do the work for you. But anyway, the main story this week seems to be the unveiling of the Princess Diana statue next to Kensington Palace. And if you ask me, it looks more like a young Mary Berry, or possibly Tommy Steele if you remember him from back in the day. Give the sculptor some credit, I certainly do prefer it to the modern artistic experiments they put in the fourth plinth at Trafalgar Square. And at least this statue is unlikely to result in anyone being badly injured, unlike that memorial pond they built a few years ago. You know, when I first saw this story, I must be honest, I had no idea why they were actually choosing this year to erect a statue of Princess Diana, other than perhaps to get William and Harry in a room together, but apparently she would have been sick today or something like that. I'm always puzzled as to why she's held up as some kind of saintly divine figure by many when at the time when she died she was just another face doing the rounds at the tabloids in OK magazine. A bit like Jennifer Aniston minus the haircut or anything. I never knew any girls who asked for the Princess Diana cut. If she were alive today she'd almost certainly be on her fourth or possibly fifth playboy husband by now, all of which would have been questionable with shady connections to money and the press would have spent the last 20 years continuing to churn out the same scathing articles that were seemingly forgotten about the day that Elton John sat down at a piano. I'm thinking of down Mark Elizabeth Taylor, but blonde and British and obviously fewer movie roles. You know, looking back at the time, the fawning over a death by the London press probably did more to stir up Scottish nationalism than any royal since Edward Longshanks. But anyway, let's end by lightening the mood somewhat with a joke. Why did Princess Diana cross the road? Answer, because she wasn't wearing a seatbelt. Anyway, see you next week. Please click subscribe.